Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regim to Dukum video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the almighty i9-9900K, which is Intel's first 8-core, 16-thread processor. Now, this CPU, of course, has been long in the works, and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for some benchmarks for the Nard thing. Well, we finally have them. Just a quick reminder, this processor as I just mentioned, is 8 cores, 16 threads, with just two processor cores running up to 5 gigahertz, and then subsequently going down and down and down with all 8 cores. However, the CPU still runs at a fairly blistering 4.7 gigahertz. But clock speed is not important. Number of cores isn't important. What is important, of course, is the actual performance of the Dalon thing. So what did we get? In terms of raw performance, the chip has scored 10,719 points. This has been found on 3 d Mark thanks to the infamous Alika Tun Apisak. And we are, of course, looking specifically at the CPU-specific run. So we have an overall score of 9,725. That is with a GTX 1080 Ti, or Ti if you prefer. And what's even better is this is even further confirmation, although we pretty much know this uh, up to a fault because we did, of course, uh, uh, just yesterday report that H310 motherboards are receiving BIOS support for the uh, upcoming ninth generation processors. But in this case, it was running on the Asus Z370F Strix gaming motherboard. So how does the 9900K compare to its competitors, which of course would be the 2700X from AMD and the 8700K from Intel themselves? Well, obviously it does depend on the rest of the system configurations, but typically you're looking at around 2500 points. This is once again looking at the CPU performance of 3D Mark over the 8700K, obviously the sheer number of threads here that it has over its previous generation counterpart just puts it completely and utterly over the edge. But against the uh, 2700X, you're looking at around 1500 points. Now I say around because obviously Ryzen is very memory sensitive. Furthermore, the base clock of this chip is running at just 3.1 gigahertz. So it is possible that there might be a little extra room left in the tank. I say that because from what the leaked specifications of this darn thing are, it has a base clock of the final retail silicon of up to 3.6 gigahertz. So it is possible that this chip wasn't always maintaining maximum clock speed, although I'm somewhat dubious of that. It's also possible that later BIOS revisions could also slightly improve performance or microcode updates. You get the idea. But either way, I'm pretty damn confident that this chip is going to certainly be considerably faster than AMD 2700X. Really, now it comes down to the pricing and what Intel feel that they can get away with charging for this processor. Will they go for a really high price, for example, 450 US dollars, or will they try to be as competitive as possible, possibly just slightly more expensive than, let's say, the 8700K is now? Well, all we can do is wait. It has also been further confirmed, but yet more reports just recently already uh, did uh, cover this, but I just want to quickly add this in, that Gollum.de have also confirmed that we're looking at soldered IHSs for both the 9900 and the 9700K. So as a quick reminder, this will allow overclocking for these chips to be a lot more uh, comfortable. So we should see higher clock speeds in theory uh, compared to their predecessors. So with that, combined with higher clock speeds out of a gate, if we can get another two, three, four hundred megahertz over, let's say, what the average overclock for the 8700K is, it certainly will put a lot of pressure on AMD. But that said, if the 2700X and the 9900K are in completely different pricing segments, it doesn't really matter. If, for example, there's $200 in it, well, yeah, okay, the 9900K is going to be faster, but, well, yeah, you're also paying $200 more for it. It's also going to be very interesting to me how this chip scales with other applications. Gaming, of course, it's probably not going to make that much difference. Often, as we all know, if you're playing a resolution which is the highest resolution your monitor can support, typically you are genuinely bound by the GPU, particularly when you start employing downsampling and other such uh, technologies and injecting post-process anti-aliasing, it consumes GPU performance quite, uh, quite quickly. So oftentimes for gaming, probably not always going to be the issue. However, I wouldn't be surprised if minimum frame rates are slightly better on the Intel processor compared to uh, AMD. So perhaps if you're driving a high refresh screen, for example, let's say 144 hertz or faster, then that might be something to consider. 
Either way, I'm going to be very much eager to uh, start testing these processes uh, when they are finally released. I'm also going to quickly add in a rumor that's floating around the internet, and this has originated on the website semiaccurate.com. We've not been able to confirm this yet because they are the ones that are leading with the story, and they actually have the story behind a $1,000 paywall. You have to become a professional level subscriber to read the whole thing. So unfortunately, we can't read it and figure out further details. So I'm just going to add this as a rumor for now, but still, according to... Charlie over at uh, Semi Accurate, Intel has lost a $1 billion uh, client, and this apparently is something that the company have been trying to hide over the past several months. And according, once again, to Semi Accurate, they have been researching this non disclosure for several months, and while they still are lacking some details, they do have enough sources with direct knowledge to know the conclusions of what this actually means. And one of the estimates they have come with is one of Intel's divisions has actually lost between one quarter and one third of their business, which is about one billion US dollars. Another benchmark that's going around at the moment is the Ryzen 5 2500X. It has been spotted in the 3 Mark database as well, and we have a CPU performance result for it. And that is 4011 in TimeSpy 1.0. And you're going to say, well, that is actually not that impressive. In fact, it's pretty much in the same ballpark as what you might find for the uh, previous generation, the 1500X. We do also have a little bit more information regarding the CPU performance. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether this is being uh, detected incorrectly. Uh, it's being reported at uh, 3.6 gigahertz for the stock clocks and 4.4 gigahertz for the maximum turbo clocks which according to what we actually know about these processors means that the turbo frequencies are several hundred megahertz above what it should be because the turbo uh, from what we understand is going to be four gigahertz but what about the score why is the score so low well it's possible that these scores are actually originating from a pre-built computer we've actually seen uh, acer themselves leak the existence of this chip on their desktop we actually covered this a while ago it was the acer nitro n5100 and from what we can ascertain it is only using a single channel of memory so it has one stick of eight gigabytes in it so if you know anything about processors of course particularly amd processors which are very sensitive to ram timing and in particular uh well bandwidth only having one channel of memory is probably crippling the processor somewhat. So it's possible, and obviously we don't know yet because the processors have not been released. So it could also be other things like, oh, I don't know, uh, not final retail silicon. It could also be uh, the BIOS needs an update. You get the idea by now. But still, it's possible that we are looking at the fact that uh, there are numerous issues here. For example, it could be the BIOS needs to be updated. It could be that the uh, process is not uh, reaching maximum clock speed because it's not retail silicon. And of course, the most likely candidate is if it is only using one channel of memory, while well, that's vastly hamstringing the CPU's performance. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.